Hello everyone, I hope you're all having an extraordinary day or night. In this video, we're gonna look at some more kinematics and this is going to be one of the final kinematics problems that we do, at least for uniformly accelerated motion in the horizontal dimension. And right now we're gonna help Bobby J achieve some goals, okay? Now this is a challenging problem so I'm going to be explaining a lot. So if you don't understand something, please feel free to stop, go back, or I even encourage you to try and figure some things out on your own because I'll be kind of prodding you in that direction as we go through the problem. So without further ado, let the games begin. So Bobby J hopes to complete the 10 kilometer run in less than 30 minutes. After exactly 27 minutes, there are still 1100 meters to go. If Bobby J dug deep and he accelerated 0.2 meters per second squared, for how long would he have to accelerate at this acceleration to achieve his 30 minute mark? Or if I read it exactly how it is, for how long would he have to, ah, sorry. Okay, it, it's an it's a awkwardly worded sentence, so please excuse me, but I'm asking for how long would he have to, meaning how long would he have to accelerate at this acceleration to achieve his 30 minute mark. So there are a lot of things happening right now. So Bobby J is running this race, and when he hits the 27 minute mark inside his race, he realizes that he still has 1100 meters to go. And right now he's going to accelerate and the question asks for how long is he going to accelerate in order to complete the 10K, 10 kilometer run in less than 30 minutes. So if we look at the first part, there's a big question. What's happening before 27 minutes? What is he doing during this time? So if you look at this, so I'll call this T1 and you'll see why I call it T1 shortly so 27 minutes this is what he does he runs some distance what is this distance well if there are 1100 meters left after 27 minutes then he must have run 10,000 minus 1100 which should give us a nice 8900 meters so what we can what we can do or what we should do is since they didn't say what's happening before then, namely, maybe they don't, they don't care as much, but they want us to focus on the latter part of the race. So what we can do is we can simplify this. Instead of complicating it and asking these questions, well, did he have an acceleration? Let's assume that he didn't have an acceleration, and that enables us to find his average velocity for this entire journey. And we can find that, and I will call that V1. And we know velocity is just distance over time and we know the distance is 8900 and the time is 27 times 60 because we want this in seconds now if we quickly calculate that 8900 divided by 27 times 60 we get 5.49 meters per second so Bobby J's average velocity for this stretch is 5.49 meters per second. We can assume that this was the pace he kept up until that 27 meter mark. Now, this, this is a critical point here because at this point, let us also look at what happens here. At this point, Bobby J accelerates. So at 27 meters, sorry, at 27 minutes, this is exactly when Bobby J accelerates because they said after 27 minutes, there's still 1100 meters to go. And if Bobby J dug deep and accelerated 0 0.2 meters per second squared. So let's assume that exactly at 27 minutes, which is right here, this is where Bobby J begins to accelerate. So right here for this portion, Bobby J has this acceleration. 
he accelerates at 0 0.2 meters per second squared. And we know some things about this journey. If he accelerates through this journey, his final velocity won't be the same as the velocity that he started this acceleration at, that he started this leg at. And we know this right here. We know what this is called because his initial velocity here would be the exact same as his average velocity because bear in mind, he's maintaining this 5.49 meters per second. And I right here, this is when he pushes the gas and he starts to accelerate. So right here, I am just going to write, I'll put that V1 right there. And then he finishes with some velocity V2 right here. And then for this stretch, let's assume that he has no acceleration and he just cruises. Well, I'm running out of space. So acceleration is zero at this leg. So right here, he runs at a constant, at a constant pace and his average velocity is 5.49 meters per second. And right here at exactly 27 minutes, he kicks the gas and he starts accelerating. So he accelerates from 5.49 meters per second to some other final velocity, which is very easy for us to find. And right here, he cruises on to victory. So now the big question is, what happens next? What's his time? How long does it take here? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to map this out and I'll call this right here, call this distance x2, I'll call this distance x3, I'll call this time right here t1, and I'll call, sorry, t2, and I'll call this time right here t3. I'm actually gonna go to this so I have, have a bit more space so I can make this cleaner. Okay, so we've already done the math. So I'm gonna make this a little wide just so everything fits. So this distance right here is X2. This distance right here is X3. I'll put this acceleration up here, 0 0.2 meters per second squared. I'll put this acceleration here, zero. This is some time T2. This is some time T3, okay? And we know this is 89. We know this is 27 minutes. So right now, this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find this T2, and we know a few things, okay? So we know that he has some V1 here, and right here, he has some V2, and we can find this. So we know that V2 is equal to V1 plus the acceleration A times T2, the time that he accelerated. So this is 5.49 plus 0 0.2 times that time T2, okay? So we know that this V2, this is going to be the same for this stretch of the journey right here because we're assuming that he has no acceleration here. So we're now going to find the distances because now the whole thing is that we want to find this T2, but there are a whole lot of unknowns that I have. Okay, so I'm gonna start writing out a system of equations to see if I can simplify this. And I'm going to continue that in the next video, so hold firm, the fun is about to begin.